Sergeant and Mrs. Smith, you are going to love this house. Is that a tub in the kitchen? There's no field manual for finding the right home. But when you do, USAA Homeowners Insurance can help protect it the right way. Restrictions apply. Get the little ones, sit back, relax, and listen to the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated G for general audiences. Chapter 20 The air was crisp and cool and whispered of the false promises of spring. In the streets, men who had dressed with the recent warm nights in mind hurried to their homes, their thin coats huddled around them, their hands thrust deep into their pockets and their eyes on the ground. If any of them had thought to look up, it is unlikely they would have seen the man on the roof of the six-story office building. He clung to the shadows and stood stock still, watching the street below and waiting like a statue. It is entirely possible that a passer-by, were they oblivious to the cold and staring dreamily at the moon, might have noticed the sudden appearance of a dark shape darting across the glower looning light high above the same six-story office building. But had they noticed such a thing as a lithe but very female shape in the midnight sky, they would have put it down to wine, imagination, or other follies of springtime. Ten seconds later, after a quick firing of her static shoes, the flying squirrel landed noiselessly on the rooftop. She settled into a crouch atop the small shed that housed the counterweights for the building's elevators and froze instantly. She could just discern the shape of the red panda's back as he watched the dead-end street below, and only because she knew what she was looking for. She waited a full minute until she was certain that he had not heard her, and then promptly rejected the thought. Of course he knows I'm here, she thought, cupping her face in her hands as she watched him. He's just waiting for me to blink first. Thirty more seconds passed. Gosh, he's stubborn, she thought. Another minute passed. "'Have I ever told you that you're a very stubborn girl?' he asked at last. "'I had a good teacher,' she said, forgetting her annoyance at having jumped slightly when he finally spoke. She leapt down and sauntered over in his direction. "'You stood me up,' she teased. "'I did nothing of the kind,' he protested seriously, though still distracted. "'I thought that you were on patrol. "'And I thought you were going to come and find me when you'd met with Samson,' she needled. I was all set to make you chase me and everything. He chewed the inside of his lip to keep from smiling. Kit Baxter, behave yourself, he scolded, not meaning it. Yes, boss, she promised, not meaning it either. Just out of curiosity, how were you planning on finding me? I thought I might listen for the sound of purse snatchers sobbing in terror, he smiled in spite of himself. No dice tonight, she grinned. The bad guys all forgot their winter coats and went home early. It's duller than dishwater out there. Well, it's riveting up here, he deadpanned. Pull up a stool. She stood beside him and peered at the shabby entrance on the street below. The sign above the door read, Private Club, Members Only. But both masked fighters knew that membership was wide open for the city's small-time underworld players, and that the only undesirables whom the management would refuse to admit would be agents of the law. "'No Samson yet?' she said, sounding only slightly worried. "'No sign,' he said calmly. Gregor Samson was known within their network as Agent 33, a deep-cover agent who had assumed the identity of a deceased con man named Miles Grant in order to provide them with information within the city's rackets and gangs. He was brave, fiercely loyal, and generally as punctual as a man living a carefully staged lie could possibly be. "'Think something's up?' she said, noticing that she could now see wisps of vapor when she breathed. "'Possibly. Mother Hen's message said that Samson was to meet an informant, who promised a lead on who was fencing several rather unique items from the Empire Bank job. He wanted to meet us right after. "'If he wanted to risk his cover with a face-to-face, -face, he must have thought this was something big,' Kit said excitedly. "'I should say so,' the Red Panda said gravely. "'And yet here we stand.' "'Who was he meeting?' Larry Beckett. Larry Beckett? He's pretty small time. The masked man nodded. What is it they say about little fish? She pursed her lips in thought. They tend to get eaten by big fish? 
The knit of his brows told her this was not quite the response he'd been hoping for, but he seemed to be giving it more thought than she'd intended, though he had yet to move his eyes from the doorway below. She sighed. For this you leave a girl alone in the cold. At last he turned his head towards her and touched the side of his face, activating the special lenses in his mask. Looking at his partner in the infrared spectrum, he could clearly see by her thermal signature that she had worn her winter weave suit, which was temperature regulated up to thirty degrees below freezing. He was just about to mention this when she cut in. "'Are you undressing me with them fancy eyes of yours again?' she said, without looking back or cracking a smile. He made several sounds of flustered outrage and turned back to the street, his face turning the color of his mask as he did so. Kit grinned. She didn't get the better of him often and had no intention of letting up. "'I didn't say you had to stop,' she said quietly. Kit Baxter, he was turning back to her to give her a proper scolding that neither one of them would have believed at all, when movement from below caught his eye. Several men pushed the front door open and headed in separate directions. Two headed back toward the main drag of Young Street. The third cut left and across the alleyway. On the rooftop above, all was suddenly dead serious. "'Tell me that isn't who I think it is,' the Red Panda said, knowing what the answer would be. "'That's Larry Beckett, all right,' the Flying Squirrel growled. "'Looks like he's in his cups. He's leaving more than an hour late and with no sign of Gregor anywhere.' "'Follow those two, the Red Panda pointed. See where they go, just in case.' "'Right, Bosh,' she said, and she was gone. The Red Panda fired his grapple gun into the darkness above the alleyway. Larry Beckett's evening was about to become much less festive.